and welcome back to Redirecting. I'm going to be talking about a subject that's been on my mind to talk about for some time now, for quite some time, um, the subject of African Americans and the things that we have experienced here in this country. Um, someone sent me a video earlier today that um, uh, Dr. Mumby shared on her channel, and it kind of uh, grabbed my attention again as to uh, making the comparison of what we have gone through versus what Africans have gone through. And the question was, because when I decided to talk on this some time ago, I asked myself, who has suffered the most, Africans or African Americans? And my conclusion was that it's not an issue of who has suffered the most, but I see this game that's played with those in the diaspora and those on the continent where each other looks at what they've gone through as worse than what the other has gone through. And from my standpoint, it doesn't matter where we are in the world, I see us as one people. And my suffering or your suffering isn't greater than the other. That's the way I see it. Um, but that comparison kind of works again towards the division that we already have. Uh, there is a mindset that has been implanted into us uh, by our um, captors, uh, colonial powers, uh, persecutors, whatever you want to call them. That mindset is divide and conquer. They have created a division in our minds where not only have we all suffered at their hands, but we all seek their approval. Now, when I say all, I'm, I know that there are segments of us that don't do this. I'm talking about in mass around the world, um, in the diaspora and on the continent. You have our people who still seek the approval of those who have done uh, these atrocities to us. Now, here in America, um, also in North America, in Central America, South America, um, in Europe, there are things that have happened to our people in various regions around the world. The four corners of the earth um, where Judah has been sent, Judah has experienced hardship. While those on the continent, they were just left. Um, actually, I'm not going to say left because they were sent into exile. Okay, into various regions um, in uh, South Africa, the eastern parts of Af Africa, the western parts. <clears throat> And so on and so on. And in this case, I'm talking about Israelites because most, uh, many of the northern regions um, are occupied by the children of Ham. Not saying that none of us are there, but for the most part, many of the really, really, really hot areas are the children of Ham. But where they were exiled to, they have gone through some tremendous suffering as well. When I look across the board, to me, dead is dead. Torture is torture. There are images of Africans who have been tortured, hands chopped off, feet chopped off, um, things of that nature. You have here in the America, you've had uh, hands, feet, um, arms chopped off, penises chopped off, rape and ravish, all kinds of things. Do you think uh, the person who has suffered these things in Africa is going to say, well, um, Mine was worse than yours because yours happened here in the on, on um, American soil. Dead is dead. Torture is torture. There, to me, is no comparison. And I think when we try to make the comparisons of who um, has suffered the most, um, this is where we come into more problems. The, these are problems we create ourselves, more division. It kind of reminds me of children. Let me just tell a little story here about my childhood and how my mom was. <clears throat> My mom was like this. If she made your plate and um, you started to complain about anything, for instance, in our household, uh, there would be this thing that would always happen with uh, my brothers. My brother, I would say mo more so between my brother and myself, my older sister, not not as much. OK, but there would be this thing of uh, you got more than me. And so when my mother would hear that, she would just take it all. <laughs> you know, since you want to complain and compare about who has the most, I'm just going to take it from just take it all. Right. And so that that's what it reminds me of. But cause, cause even my children, I've heard them uh, whining about that sort of thing. 
And I just kind of remind them, I don't take theirs like my mom used to do. My mom was a lot more strict than I am, and my husband is, you know. But um, even with our children, I remind them of what my mom did. I said, when I, when I was a child, if I would do that, what you're doing right now, complaining, talking about she has more than me or he has more than me, my mom would just take it from us all together. So I don't want to hear any complaining or comparison. And so that's kind of uh, a very juvenile um, explanation of what I'm trying to say that happens with African Americans and Africans. I notice a lot of comparisons are made between African Americans and Africans versus Africans and those in the Caribbean or Africans and those in the UK and other areas because there's something very significant and different about African Americans. It's it's not hard to explain, but I'm not going to try to do it in this video. And I don't mean that in a good way either. Um, there is a certain type of mindset that is present here that is just not right. Okay, just not right. Um, when we look at our brothers and sisters, um, especially so many that are in the awakening, uh, we've taken on this very um, prideful attitude of knowing who we are as if um, as if the Most High hasn't anointed any other uh, voices to speak when that is not the case. You have people down in the Caribbean who are just as much from the tribe of Judah as we are. You see the same with those in the UK, some in Canada. So the U.S. has a certain, the U.S. Um, Israelites have a certain mindset that needs to be dealt with. Okay. But anyway, back to what I'm saying, when we try to discount the suffering of our people because we're in different regions and we just see because we're here like oh no one could have gone through anything worse than us you know and just because Africans are there oh no one could have gone through anything worse than us when you make those comparisons is, is it even necessary is it even necessary and I'm referring to those who I've heard over the years who have put up videos to uh, you know, especially those who say, well, those Africans sold us into slavery, not even knowing all of the facts of how things happen and what went down. But you're just saying Africans as if every person on the continent of Africa took part in this, as if every country in Africa took part in this, as if they all were happy to do so and not even knowing who really truly did it and what kind of corner were they backed into to do it. And let me just tell what I mean on that real quick. When you have someone shoving a gun in your face and telling you, look, this is what you need to do. Round up these people. Look, I'll give you some uh, wine and I'll give you some sugar. Or I'll give you some some aid. But this is what you must do. But if you don't do it, I'm going to kill you and your whole group. When you have beasts that come and give you those type of ultimatums. And I'm not saying that is fully what has happened, but we can't sit here in today's time and try to draw our own narratives based on facts that in many cases have been given to us by the same people who have conquered us, captured us, enslaved us, colonized us, depending on where you are in the world. We've got to be more honest with ourselves and just kind of put two and two together in some cases. We can't assume that it was Hamites. We can't assume anything. Okay? Um, it's very well possible that it was other members of the tribe of Judah who did this. And that some of them still remain on the continent of Africa. That is very possible too. Because how could another tribe gather every last member of the tribe of Judah and say, Oh, I think this is the last one. They're all out of here. It could have very well been Judah selling Judah. And I'm not saying that as a matter of fact. I'm just saying that we've got to learn how to get other details before we start saying that, oh, they sold us and I don't care what happened to those Hamites or those Africans. All of these mindsets is what brings us to these places of division. While at the same time, you have those on the continent of Africa and those in the diaspora still trying to gain favor with those who did it to all of us. You see how juvenile it makes us all sound, how ignorant and how stupid it makes us all sound. Oh, I know you all did this to us, but I, I just I just won't be your friend. Can you favor me over this one? Can you love me more, master, than you love that one? I'd be a good slave if you loves me more than you loves him. Kind of remind me of the house Negro and the field Negro. 
You have the house Negro wanting the master's favor, but the field Negro say, I don't care what master think. I can't wait till we break free because when we break free, oh, my goodness, I'm going to leave it right there, family. I just wanted to um, expound on this because it's something that I've, I've been meaning to talk to this, talk about this for a while now. And as a matter of fact, I've mentioned this before that I have a whole list of subjects that I want to talk about. And I felt kind of a nudge when someone shared um, um, Dr. Mumby's video where they were talking about, you know, the different sufferings. I mean, over the years, we have really looked closely at the sufferings of Africa because we're very familiar with our sufferings here in the U.S. and in Canada and in South and Central America. We're very familiar with what our people have gone through. And I remember back, I'd say about 10 years ago, when we started putting together our own um, African-American uh, or black history materials or educational materials, whatever you want to call them, uh, many of the, the topics that we researched were, you know, things that happened in Africa on the continent to our people. And, of course, to me, dead is dead. Suffering is suffering. Okay? Torture is torture. It doesn't make it any more, uh, any worse just because it happened to someone on the, on the continent versus someone here in the U.S. Suffering is suffering. Dead is dead. And the enemy of us all did it all they are the ones who did it and so we don't need to try to see who who suffered the most or who can find the best favor with the, the torturers that sounds like ignorance to me it sounds really foolish but that that is where we are at this present time family we are right there where we all let me clarify where many of us in mass uh, try to seek the approval the love and the companionship of people who continue to this day to treat us in a certain way. To me, when you really sit back and think about that for a minute, when you just really think and ponder on that, what does that make us look like as a people indigenous to this planet to where we are trying to seek love and favor with those who came after us and continue to treat us a certain way? What does that say about us? It sounds like our mental capacity has been chipped away at for a very long time to the point where we identify more with the torturers than we do with our own people. We have more love and forgiveness for those who have done some horrendous things to us than we do for our own people. We despise our own people. It's really sad to me that you can feel so much tension and hatred Sometimes you can literally feel the hatred and the tension that our people have for one another. It's really sad when you can feel it. Really sad. That's why we have to remind one another, those of us who have any type of spiritual sanity at all, we've got to remind one another that we do love each other. I love my people on the continent of Africa. I love my people here in America. I love those that are in various regions of the world. Anyone who meets me and gets a chance to to know me would know that I have a very loving heart towards my people. And it really saddens me when I see what we have become. But when I look at the Bible, I see that there is nothing new under the sun. Nothing whatsoever. This has all been said and done before. And it's going to take some work for us to get back to the right place. Of, as a matter of fact, it's going to take divine intervention for us to get back to that place that we are supposed to be. Because we are messed up right now as a people. Lacking love and compassion for one another, but loving our enemies. You see, that is a very sad existence for us to have. And some of us don't see anything wrong with it. That's the sad thing. And we even justify in our minds, well, I don't like her. I don't like him. And you think you can go and just... Hand that to the Most High and say, "Here, well, here's my reason. You think he's going to go for it? You think he's going to accept your reasons for why you don't like this sister or that brother? I may not agree with what all of my sisters and brothers are doing or what they stand for or what they say. But that does not diminish the love that I have for my people. 
if I could just explain, this is something that has always been in me from a very young age. And I say this from time to time because I need those of you who listen to this channel to remember this. But from a very young age, the Most High has put an extreme love in my heart from my people. He's put it there. And even though the enemy has tried his best to try to just yank it out through the actions that some of our people may hold, he's tried his best to yank it out. And boy, I've had some struggles in my flesh. Yes, I have. <laughs> yes, I have. But it ain't going nowhere because this is something that Yah put there. You see, when the Most High puts something there, it ain't nothing a devil in hell can do to take it out. But I still feel that we as a people need to get it together. We need to pray for one another, um, pray for righteousness, deal with each other righteously, um, stop all of this hatred. You know, I know it's easier said than done because some people, they have evil embedded in them. And I'm talking about our people. And that's not something you can pray out. That's a demon that's going to be cast out. It has to be cast out. You see, so just like love can be placed in a person's heart, mind and soul, the same can be done with hatred and bitterness. These are all spirits that ride you around like a doggone witch on a broomstick. OK, family, I am done with this subject. I just wanted to talk about the sufferings of our people worldwide that we should not compare who went through the most because dead is dead and torture is torture. All right. With that, family, I will say I love you and shalom. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel and also comment, share, like and subscribe.